Yes. Hey, Mark Wahlberg here. Check out Transformers Age of Extinction when it hits AMC theaters on June 27th. You're watching AMC Movie Talk. Hey everyone and welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm Chris Lee Kennedy and this is the show where we bring you the day's biggest movie news and of course we give you insight into what it all means. Joining me as always is AMC Movie News Senior Editor, Mr. John Campia. Greetings and salutations everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet coming to you live from the Stream.TV studios here in Hollywood, California. We are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. We also have AMC's Alicia Malone. Hello, good morning. Where have my camera? Ah, oh, hi. I <laughs> uh, just want to say quickly, rest in peace, Eli Wallach. Thanks for Tuco. Yeah, I just yeah. read that this morning. Just yeah. read that this morning. We also have AMC's Christian Harloff. Well, you guys have been asking me to do it. I finally did it. Apes on Horses shirt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and the director of the upcoming film, The Death of Superman Lives. What happened, Mr. John Schnapp? And let me throw a rest in peace to Richard Matheson. Yeah. So. He died as well. All right, guys, according to The Hollywood Reporter, Iron Man 3 and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang director Shane Black has been brought on by 20th Century Fox to both write the treatment for and direct a Predator reboot. Once Black has the story finished, he'll hand it off to Robocop 3 director Fred Decker to do the script. John, what do you think about Black taking on a Predator reboot? I really like Shane Black. I, I, I really do. Now, there's two points, parts to this question, right? It's like, well, what do you think about Shane Black doing it and what do you think about it being done at all in the first place? I stand as one of the people that I still say I liked Iron Man 3. I, I now understand, I didn't understand it before, I now understand the rage that Iron Man 3 fa uh, or Iron Man fans felt about the whole bait and switch thing with the Mandarin. I get it. I still enjoyed it as a twist. I did. And was it as good as the first Iron Man? No. But I thought it was fun, entertainment, and it was definitely a Shane Black film when you watch it. I love Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I love the sensibilities he brings. A fit for Predator? I don't know, we've been seeing lately some really talented filmmakers step out of one genre that they're particularly attached to, to do something different, and it turns out spectacular. A, a great storyteller is a great storyteller, I guess. So if you're gonna reboot Predator, to me, Shane Black is a really nice name. It's a very, it's an interesting name too, one I wouldn't have guessed. Mm -hmm. I like it though. Should you reboot Predator? <laughs> I, you know what? I. I'm gonna say yeah. I think you, I think you can't do anything more with this pre, this Predator universe. Once you started cross pollinating it with aliens and stuff like that, and it started to become really silly. Um, I didn't mind that last Predator movie, the one with took place on Adrian the alien Brody. world Predators. with Adrian Brody. Yeah. Predators. I didn't mind that. I really didn't. But to me, it's run out of gas. And if you're gonna do one, it's time to reboot it. So I, I guess I'm okay with it on all levels. What do you think? I enjoy it. Here's why. I actually, Predators, the only reason I like Predators a little bit was because they had the Predator music in it from the original. Mm -hmm. The only Predator movie <laughs> I've ever liked is the first one. And when I say liked, I say, I mean loved. It's one of yeah. my favorite movies of all time. Here, I would have told you if it was three days ago and you told me they were going to reboot Predator, I'd say you stop it and you stop it now. <laughs> when you tell me that Shane Black's doing it, don't forget he was in Predator. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's he, right. He was right, Hawkins. Telling the story, he's right? in the family. He was. He's. He was around all of McTiernan doing the directing. He knows it. If he's. If he's. He's an '80s guy. He's. He's the guy that did Lethal Weapon. Mm -hmm. He knows this franchise very well, and he knows what made it so popular. If you watch like a, a making, they did this whole big making of the movie. It's on YouTube. You should watch it. He is one of the guys first and foremost. He's, in the, he's right in the center saying, this is what's so cool about this movie. He knows it. I am very excited that he is the guy doing it. Shep? Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that he was so involved in the first one. But yeah, I mean, I love all of Shane Black's movies. I think he's a great writer. So going with a great writer, and I think he's a great director too. So, I mean, he's writing the pitch or the, so, so, like the script. The treatment, and then, yeah, the treatment. Then uh, Fred Decker is doing the script, but uh, that was the one that zinged me. I was like, why yeah. get the, the guy who directed RoboCop 3? I, there's gotta be a reason, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I It is kind of an out of left out there, but name, I trust right? Shane Black. I bet Shane Black was like, get that dude. Yeah. For some reason, maybe he can get that 80s flavor dialogue. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm, I'm way into this. I'm all in. Alicia? Yeah, well, I was reading that they offered Shane Black that small role in Predator to try and sweeten the deal to get him to uh, rewrite, do some rewrites mm. on it. So I guess he's come around now. When I first read the news, I was like, oh, I don't know. I love Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. Thank you. I'd really love to see him do another smaller original concept, but I know that he probably likes to eat. 
he probably likes to pay his rent. <laughs> <laughs> so these movies are what getting getting financed, getting made at the moment. Um, I just have three questions about this one. First is, will he set it around Christmas? Because mm. he set four films around Christmas, right. which is great for a sense of isolation. Mm. Uh, two, who are they going to get to play Arnie, the main role? Right, if it's a true film? reboot, if it's per a se, true yeah. reboot, because they don't make actors like that anymore. Right, that's why they have the Expendables. And three, will we see Robert Downey Jr. in a cameo? Because these two are buddy buddies. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe Rob Robert could play the role that Shane Black played in the original. Hawkins, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's next? The upcoming Brad Pitt film Fury has just released its first trailer, April 1945, as the Allies make their final push in the European theater. A battle-hardened army sergeant named War Daddy, played by Brad Pitt, commands a Sherman tank and her five-man crew on a deadly mission behind enemy lines. Outnumbered and outgunned, War Daddy and his men face overwhelming odds and the heroic attempts to strike at the heart of Nazi Germany. The film also stars Shia LaBeouf, Logan Lerman, Michael Penna, John Bernthal, and Jason Isaacs. Fury opens in AMC theaters everywhere on November 14th. Christian, what do you think of this trailer for Fury? I loved this trailer. It blew, <laughs> it blew me away. I'm a World War II movie guy. I, and I have said, I have publicly said I'm not a big fan of Shia LaBeouf, so I won't say his real name, <laughs> on, as far as the person, as far as an actor, when it's in roles like this, the guy delivers, and he, yeah. can, and he can act. Like Lawless, I thought he was fantastic. And, and this team that they have put together, seeing this trailer, I really like this tone. It gave me, it had like a si Saving Private Ryan feel to it, and uh, Logan Lerman as the, as the, oh, I'm kind of a fish out of water here. Like, you'll see it by the end, you know where his character's kind of going, you think, but I like the setup. What concerns me is David Ayer has only really directed one good movie, and that's End of Watch. I didn't like Sabotage. He wrote Training Day, but so it makes me a little nervous, but this trailer, I'm on board. I love yeah. this trailer. And it, it, I had a little bit of a sense, speaking of Brad Pitt, of uh, Assassination of Jesse James, a little bit with the Logan Lerman character, mm -hmm. just a little bit with War Daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought since the very first time I saw him in the first Percy Jackson and the Olympians movie, uh, actually, even going prior to that, I thought this kid can act. Yeah. This kid's good, and then you see him in this trailer, and and again, it, Shia doesn't have a lot in this trailer, but every second he's on screen, and I'm like, damn, this this dude. You know, there's a reason Sp he's like Spielberg's golden mm, kid, right. mm -hmm. uh, because he's really uh, whatever your personal feelings are off camera. I totally understand. Right. <laughs> When he's on screen, the dudes, he can the have, dude can rock. Yeah, yeah. And Brad Pitt is simply one of the best in the business. And this looks great. And just, I love the whole theme about something we don't touch on in action films or anything at all. And I love that it really hammered it home this trailer. Like these action films with Rambo kills 155 guys, or just taking a human life is a huge deal and a huge thing. And that, that one scene in the trailer was like, they see the German soldier in the, in the foxhole and like, the guy does not want to pull the trigger. He doesn't want to kill that human being. And the guy's like, do your job, do your job. It's like, <gasps> like yeah. it, it was just, to me, it overwhelmed me. I, I thought it was fantastic. I cannot wait to see this movie. Alicia, mm. you saw it. What did you think? I loved it. You know, I get my kicks from color grading and shot composition, nerd. <laughs> and I love the look of this trailer because he's married his gritty street style, the buddy movie that we've seen David Ayer do so well with the World War II drama. Mm. I think that is a perfect fit. It's war on the streets, war in tanks, brotherhood of men, tough moral choices, and the cast looks brilliant. I love it. Schnapp. Yeah, for me, it's <clears throat> I really liked the, the whole cast. I mean, yeah, LaBeouf, like for me, when I saw Charlie Countryman, it was when all, he was wearing a bag on his face right. and stuff. Yeah. But that movie is a really good film. Mm -hmm. He really did a great job in it. His outside, his personal life kind of detracts from his, his films, unfortunately. Uh, Brad Pitt, the beginning of that trailer kind of reminded me of Inglorious Bastards yeah. Yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. There was even a, a line of dialogue that was like almost right out of it, but. I want my <clears> Nazi <throat> scalps. Yeah. 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 yeah, but he was like, you know, these are my men. I take care of my men, that kind of thing. But as we go through the trailer and you see the, the, the story, I don't know if it's based on a true story or not, but it's, it's definitely based on, you know, you're against the odds when mm -hmm. you're at war and mm -hmm. the things you have to do for war and why you do things for war. And like, you know, you see all these people, homeless, walking in, this, you know, walking in the dirt. You know, you, it's definitely gonna show you what the, the horror of war is all about. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm also a World War II uh, junkie as far as seeing good movies about World War II. Not necessarily war in general, but you know, that was like a, a real horrible situation in our country and all the, all the world, you know, 
it's, I'm looking forward to it. Let's just say that. Uh, the line that in there was, "Idea is a peaceful uh, yeah. history. And history is violent. Yeah. violent." That was. Yeah. Oh, I was like, "Oh man, that just stuck with me right away." That's a. I hope we get more quotes like that throughout the movie. And David Ayer can write when he writes on when he's on point. He's on point. So. Yes. All right, folks, we've reached out part of the show for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Chris Lee's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then Schnepp, Christian, Alicia, and I are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So what do we got? Getting back to the aforementioned director, Shane Black, another one of his upcoming projects may have found its star. According to reports, Black has met with Avengers and Thor actor Chris Hemsworth about playing Doc Savage. No word on how far those discussions went or how interested Hemsworth is in the project. Snap, would you buy or sell Hemsworth as Doc Savage? I'll buy it. Even that picture looks like he's holding the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Did they already get Hemsworth already and paint him into that? Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, I think Doc Savage, I mean, the most recent thing that we've got that I can refer to as Buckaroo Banzai is basically mm. the, the most modern take on Doc Savage because Doc Savage is from the 30s and 40s. I'm not counting in, you know, that 70s movie. And there's been a bunch of reboots through Marvel and DC. Through all the comic books, he's been tossed around like a rag doll. No one's really got the right Doc Savage thing to stick yet with fans. It just, they kind of publish it and people like shrug and move on. So I think with, uh, once again, Shane Black taking this property and getting someone like Chris Hemsworth, who is kind of like some kind of strange Adonis, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. he's godlike you know, when you're in person with the guy. It's sort of like, I don't even know how genetics work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just go run off and jump off a cliff? I hate you. You know, so yeah, I think getting him to play the character of Doc Savage, who's like super hyper intelligent, a scientist, a detective, he's like all things in one. Physically, the most pure, perfect, strong. Yeah. He's yeah. basically kind of a Batman character yeah. without the dark brooding. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Alicia, what would you think about this? I Buy love it. Bye. 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 I love Chris Hemsworth, and not just because he's Australian. He mm. is, as you say, just a rare actor in that he's not only extremely good looking, not only can do the action scenes believable, but he's a good actor as well. And that combination is really mm. hard to find. I didn't know much about this character at all, but doing some Googling sounds fascinating. But it's a, an inventor, a scientist, a detective, an athlete, master of disguise and photographic memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds fascinating <laughs> to me. I'd love to see it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it too. I mean, the, and if you don't aren't really sure about Chris Hemsworth's acting chops, watch Rush again. Mm. Go, go, yeah. Because him and, and Rule, I mean, the, the performances both of them give in that are astonishing. And you can see that this dude, he's legit. He really is legit. And you're right, when, when you look at what Doc Savage is supposed to be, I can't think of four other guys off the top of my head who might be a better fit for mm -hmm. something like this than a Chris Hemsworth. So for me, it would be a big buy. It's a big buy for me as well. And when I started thinking about it, it's that you guys mentioned all his characteristics. One of the characteristics is that he's like he's like the ultimate Boy Scout, also, the, this character. That's interesting to me because this is written in the 30s into like the late 40s, and that worked back then. We don't like the Boy Scouts now. So especially Shane Black has not written Boy Scouts. Right. So I want to say, unless the, you're talking about the last Boy Scout, but, <laughs> but uh, in regards to, the, I think that he's, Hemsworth is a great choice because Hemsworth is also that guy. He is a movie star. Mm -hmm. yeah. like we haven't had a lot, there aren't a lot of movie stars out there. No. This guy is. Normally I'm always like, ah, you can't put the big movie star in a character like that because you just see the movie star. But we don't know about Doc Savage. Right. Let this yeah. be his Indiana Jones. So yeah. big bye for me. Yeah. All right, what's next? On the heels of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle character posters that came out yesterday, a brand new trailer has emerged for the Heroes in a Half Shell, and it's really hard for me to read this without singing the song. <laughs> the new Turtles movie hits AMC theaters sure. on August 8th. John Byer sell this new Turtles trailer. All right, hold on to your breath here for a second. Because uh, I know you guys talked about the character posters yesterday, touched, touched on the trailer mm -hmm. a, a little bit. I thought we'd talk about the trailer more in depth here. Look, it is, everybody knows my apprehension about this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I've had it from the beginning. I still do have my apprehension about it. But I gotta say, in all honesty, I know it's not cool to say anything positive about this movie, but I, I gotta be honest. I liked the first trailer I saw. I like the character designs. And I just saw this new trailer. I really like it. I'm not, I'm not saying I loved it as much as the Fury trailer or anything like that, but I watched this trailer and really liked it, and I, there's a moment in this trailer that made me laugh that I had to pause the trailer for a second to get over laughing because everybody knows the big thing about a year and a half ago when it was announced that Michael Bay was going to be producing, and once again, everybody, please get this through your heads. Michael Bay is not directing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. He is producing it. But when the word came out that the direction they were going to go was that the turtles were aliens. And he, he went on, he gave this big stand about they're gonna be aliens from another world, blah, blah, blah. And everybody, the backlash was 
harsh and violent, and rightfully so. So then everything goes on hiatus. Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles been pushed back, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden they're back, and now they're no longer aliens. And in this trailer, they did the best thing they could have possibly done. There's that line in the trailer yeah. where Megan Fox, and I think it's Whoopi Goldberg, says, so they're aliens? And Megan Fox is like, no, that would be stupid. I loved that. Yeah. I thought that was a great kind of wink and jab at itself. Mm -hmm. I, I really like the design. They give us a little bit of the plot. It looks like David Fichter is not Shredder. It looks like whoever that tall, bald dude in the shadows is, that at, that's actually Shredder. That's pretty cool. I think that's going to make a lot of people who have been nervous about the idea of, of Fickner playing Shredder feel a little bit happy. i got to tell you, I'm not jumping up and down about the trailer, but I I thought it was good. Let's see what happens. Anyway, Alicia. <laughs> I think you know what I'm going to say. I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I have a nostalgic love for the turtles, and it probably clouds my judgment. I'm also probably not the right person for this movie. I did like the aliens moment. I thought that was clever. But I sell this trailer because it is loud and it is noisy. There's so much going on. I hate that horrible dubstep kids music these days. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Feel really old. But I just don't like the way the turtles look. I don't understand who it's marketed to. And uh, yeah, I'm not on board with this at all. What about you, Christian? I sell the trailer, but not for Alicia's reasons. I sell the trailer because I've just seen the whole movie. Yeah, they sh there's nothing, bits. there is absolutely but we don't. You don't know that. I, I'm telling you, from what they've shown <laughs> in this trailer, I know what, uh, what, I know the direction so far we're going with Splinter, what happens to him, they show the end. <coughs> then there's that shot with, it's like, if this, what I will say about this trailer, if this was the movie you got in 1990 when the original came out, which I love, love, I love it. If this trailer came out in 1990, people would be going crazy. It's just because they're comparing it. People would love this trailer. No, there wouldn't be a lot of hate for it. This was the first Turtles movie you ever saw. Vanilla Ice and not Dubstep, I'd be on board. <laughs> but that's, that's the nostalgia <laughs> talking. Because, like, again, as a trailer overall, I thought it was a really good trailer for what this is. But there was so much in there. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that moment's going to happen. That beat's going to happen. Oh, we're going there. And I feel like there was, there was too long, and I knew I know way too much about it. So that's why I'm selling it. The trailer overall, they had a lot of good stuff in there. Shep? I'm going to buy the trailer. Like I said yesterday, I, I, I'm not a giant Turtles fan. Like, I remember buying the comic book because it was based off of Daredevil. And I was like, oh, they're ripping on Frank Miller, and it's a cool parody with stupid Turtles. Then it became a giant hit, and I wasn't into it. Because I was like, I want serious comic books. I don't need this parody stuff. Yeah. And that's how I was. I didn't watch the... I remember watching one of the movies, and I was like, yeah, it was fun. They eat pizza. Yeah. Don't care. I mean, seriously, I was like, I was happy that my friends liked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was never a fan of it. And I didn't watch the cartoon. So I don't have any of that nostalgia, none of it. But that being said, I said a little bit of that yesterday. I think I love this. I love this. the turtles' designs look cool. I don't care that they have nostrils. They have real weapons. If a turtle was actually going to talk and w walk around with weapons, this is kind of what it would look like to me. Not all soft and smushy right. and like a Muppet. Yeah. And I think Shredder looks great. I think all, you know, I don't care how many knives he has and weapons. You'd need that if you're fighting four Ninja Turtles. So <laughs> yeah. all the sequences, and there was like humor in there that I liked. The action sequences look great. I... I couldn't tell what was going to be the beginning or end, only that uh, they probably finished fighting with Shredder. I'm sure that's probably the end. Really? Which, yeah. Yeah. See, my, my challenge to you about, about your, your, your thought on the trailer was, yeah. it was this. I think there was more given about plot, direction, everything in the Fury trailer than there was in this trailer. Really? Like in Fury, we know, okay, this introduces all the characters, what's going on. Now we understand the main plot definition. So they have a bunch of victories, but now, okay, now there's this new mission. Yeah. We got 300 German soldiers against coming down five. the street. Yep. You guy goes yeah. in, and now it's us against five. Clearly their tank breaks down at some point, but right, but it's just, that's just giving us the shell of the movie. A mm -hmm. uh, shell, yeah. get it? Oh, <laughs> it's just giving us the Battle shell power. of the movie. In this we saw, okay, there are these turtles, obviously tra trained by this uh, rat under a rock, yeah. mm -hmm. and at some point, a couple of the brothers get kidnapped, and the others got to go on a rescue mission. But I think if you go yeah, through the trailer right. frame by frame, you'll probably uh, be the uh, I think you're going to get a lot yeah, of assumptions. Fault, me, you pessimist, no, 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 to go back to, the, <laughs> to your thing as far as Fury goes, that movie is going to be based on the characters, the performance. You're really going to get the emotional attachment like you did in Save a Private Ryan with the crew. This is not that kind of movie. This movie is going to be all about the action. By the way, Save a Private Ryan was not that good. You I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm joking. I nailed it. You want, me to, you want me to quit this show? Oh, yeah. The just look on your face. I was, I was, I was horrified. Yeah. That's like, that's like you Deer in the headlights. You might as well just said, I love Jar Jar Binks. Uh, <laughs> best character in Phantom Menace. Of all Star Wars. <laughs> of all anyway, so I just I just felt, to me, I felt like I know what I'm going to get and I know why their mission is going to happen and clear, clear plot points that I didn't need to see in that trailer. Oh, okay. Can I say that I will go and see this movie with an open mind? Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, hope it's it's right? I think everyone should see it with open mind. Even Teenage Mutant Ninja fans. Yeah. Like, they could be the best of all the Turtle movies. All movies That's, should be seen with open mind. Even like, look, I'm not a Transformers fan. I'm going to see it very soon. I'm going in with an open mind. Mm -hmm. I, I 
think it's going to stink, but if it's great, I will <laughs> I will go out going it was great. Oh, and I, I should mention by the way, if you're in the if you're a watch uh, AMC movie talk or whatever, and you're in the uh, Los Angeles area, uh, Schnapp and Dennis and I we're going to go see uh, Transformers tomorrow night at the AMC Burbank 16. We're going to be there for the nine o'clock showing. So if you want to come down, hang around the AMC Burbank 16, and say hi, that's where we're going to be. Yep. Anyway, dress up like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Wait, the other thing, dress up like a robot. Yeah, bring yeah. pizza. Yeah. All right, what's next? <laughs> On November 21st, the new Hunger Games film, Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, hits AMC theaters. The first video for the film has hit the web with iconic actor Donald, Donald Sutherland as President Snow sending a message to the districts rebelling against the Capitol. And when the camera pans back, we see Josh Hutcherson standing with him. Alicia Byers sell this marketing video from Hunger Games. I'm excited, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited too, and I buy this. It is so creepy, this propaganda video. Donald Sutherland. Of course, he's brilliant at playing villains. He has such a cold, commanding voice. But the thing that really got me was the line, Pan Am today, Pan Am tomorrow, Pan Am forever, forever which of course uh, reflects, you know, George Wallace's horrific speech about segregation, which incited a lot of violence. So I think that is a clever way to uh, weave that just chills into this uh, marketing. They're so good at marketing these movies. These movies I love. They've elevated the young adult fiction genre, if you can call it a genre. And just that moment at the end with Peter standing by his side, that makes me intrigued. I gotta tell you, I thought this, this little video was brilliant. I really do. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And for this generation, I don't, a lot of you guys are gonna be too young to remember this, but I remember, okay, major Star Wars fanatic, all right? The first time I saw the trailer for Return of the Jedi, and there's a moment in a trailer, in the trailer, where all the stuff is happening, and then all of a sudden you just see a door, and the door opens, and it's Darth Vader standing with Luke Skywalker. And I'm like, what? What? And I'm looking around, like, somebody tell me I'm going crazy. Like, I remember that moment so much. Like, that camera, Vader and Luke are standing together. What the hell does this mean? And yeah. freaking out, right? And I think for a lot of Hunger Games fans, maybe the ones who haven't read the books, yeah. but that moment is that camera starts to pan around Donald's head, and you're right, that voice mm. is just so amazing. And then it pulls back and you see that it's Hutchison, you see that it's Peta standing there. And then at the last moment, he looks away from the sky and back to the camera like that. And it's like, that's gotta be that moment for real hardcore Hunger Games. I thought it was a great little video, Schnepp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved it. I liked, I loved the way it was shot, very like 1984. Mm -hmm. Like a very stark and harsh, yes. oppressive, yet, oh, you have no choice but to love us. You know, love Big Brother. It's, I'm looking forward to this film. I really, I haven't read the books. I'm not a young adult person. I, I didn't never saw the Twilight, <laughs> one Twilight movie, but I've seen every Hunger Games and I really love this series. So I can't wait for this. I'm not a young adult book reader. However, I have read all of the Hunger Games books. Um, mm. I loved these books, and so I was, I knew what, where we're going with this. So when this started out, in my head I'm going, oh, where's Peter? What's mm. going on, Peter? And then they pull back, I'm like, aha, I'm like, there it is. Um, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I loved the way they did it, I loved the way they shot it. I love how it starts out really nice, and then he's basically saying, oh yeah, we own everything that you think that you live for. And like just that entire message, and that's in the book, by the way, that, yeah. that call back um, the, to George what, Wallace, what yeah. you loved as well. So yeah, I love the direction they're going. The only thing that still concerns me is that they turn Mockingjay into two books. I mean, excuse me, two, two movies, films, right. which was only one book. Uh, I, it was actually my least favorite out of the three books. So I'm very curious how they're going to do it. Um, it's, still good, it's still a good book, but just not as good as the other two. All right, folks, we've reached that part of the show for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to bring up on the show, you can email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Now, every day we take a couple questions from the Mailbag, but I'm going to let you know if you're watching us live, you have a few minutes here to tweet in some questions live. Just tweet to us at AMC Movie News. We're going to save a couple of minutes at the end of the show, and Chris Lee will pick out some questions for us then. But for now, it's time for the Mailbag. So, Chris Lee, what do we got? Michael Holquins writes, Hey guys, I love the show and haven't missed an episode. I just finished reading a new rumor that Emily Blunt is being offered the role of Catwoman in Batman vs. Superman. Now I know I'm not the only one hoping that the real story is that Zack Snyder has decided late in the game to recast Wonder Woman, <laughs> but even knowing some movies have done that in the past, that it's unlikely to happen now. Anyway, my question is, true or not, isn't this just piling on with unneeded characters at this point to add in Catwoman? Well, yeah, it is unrealistic to think that they've been shooting the movie for a while and it ain't replacing anybody, so that's fine. Um, as far as would it be piling on, no, remember, we just saw 
one of the best movies of the year in X-Men Days of Future Past, and I lost count of how many characters. Right. It's not about how many characters are there, it's how are they used and how much screen time is dedicated to them and all that kind of stuff. So you can have 55 different characters and it can work just fine, so that's not a problem. The real issue here with this whole Emily Blunt thing is that there's nothing to it. When you really dig and start looking, where did this all this come from? Where did these rumors come? Because all these sites are running to the site. Emily Blunt for is going to be Batman. When you really get to the heart of it, it's some obscure. I can't remember if it was Irish or Swedish. Some obscure little Irish or Swedish blog said, and uh, Emily Blunt is going to be in Batman versus Superman. And all of a sudden, everybody started running with it. <laughs> now that that's not to say it's an impossibility that that it could happen. No, no. And I think I j will just speak for myself. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'd be all I'd be all about that. Absolutely, no doubt about it. But really I don't think there is any truth to this, this stuff that's going around. And if you really dig down and look at where the, the rumor's all coming from and you follow the poison tree, it, it all goes down to the same rotten root, which is some obscure little unknown blog somewhere that kind of said, by the way, this is happening, and then everybody just ran with it. And it is a little weird. Have you guys heard anything different? No, I think everyone wants to see Emily Blunt do more action yes. after yes. tomorrow she, because right. she was incredible. Uh, but yeah, I agree. We had X-Men Days of Future Past, which showed that you can balance multiple characters, and then we also had Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I think didn't do right. it was so well. Was a bad job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, the one thing with Emily Blunt, the only reason that I put a little merit, not necessarily into this whatever blog that released it, was that she's been rumored around so many different uh, superhero characters. Wonder yep. Woman, she was rumored She was going to be Black Widow. Black Widow. For a while. She's yeah. been rumored mm -hmm. around so many things, and regardless of how well Edge of Tomorrow didn't, well, should have done also, but... She's getting a lot of uh, press from that, and a lot yeah. of because uh, uh, yeah. you know, she was so great in the movie. So I think that there's some merit to it, just a little bit. But uh, the the overall question of whether or not it would work, if this slate is true that Nikki Fink released, right? Right. It would make sense to me, and I'd be okay for it because then they're going because this isn't a Man of Steel sequel. Then the sequel is going to come later yeah. on. So this is when you start to introduce these characters. I hope that the majority of the focus is about Batman with Superman, and then you start sprinkling in these little characters here and there going, hey, guess what? You're going to see more of them in a movie soon, but here, here they are for like two minutes. If that's the case with Emily Blunt, yeah, I'm with you. Step. Yeah, it definitely seems like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice is a Batman movie. They've already cast yeah. Alfred. I mean, it's sort of like one of those things like, well, you're going to be in Bruce Wayne's Manor, you're going to see Alfred. You're gonna, that's, that's giving you a, like, hey, we're going to spend some quality time in this brand new Batman universe, so why not introduce Selina Kyle? She doesn't right. even have to be Catwoman. It could be Selena Kyle. So if you're talking about Selena Kyle, why not get a great actress who's already proven herself to be able to play an incredible warrior like in Edge of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. She can do all the crazy backflips and stuff. She's beautiful, and she's an incredible t talent. So yeah. I hope the rumor is true. Yeah, I mean, concept-wise, it's great. I, I just don't think there's any actual reality to it. Anyway, what's next? Simon Blackmore writes, hey AMC, love the show. <coughs> Last weekend, some Star Wars news broke about Ryan Johnson directing Star Wars 8 and 9, just as your show ended and as it was the weekend, you couldn't cover it. John touched on it over the weekend on AMC Mailbag and he said he would talk more about it on AMC Movie Talk and so far you haven't covered the story. I realize it might be a busy week on movie news and you just haven't had time to talk about it, so when I when you, sorry, <laughs> when you have the time, I would like to hear everybody else's point of view on this news. Yeah, so right as we were finishing AMC Movie Talk uh, on Friday, the news broke about Ryan Johnson. Actually, you and I talked on the phone as yeah. I was in my car. I leave saying, did you see this, Ryan Johnson? <laughs> what? Uh, and I did talk about it on AMC Mailbag over the weekend, and I said, well, we cover it on that weekend, but then other news came out, and honestly, it just skipped our minds. I mean, it was just that plain simple, just kind of skipped our minds. Um, but I already said, I love the notion um, you know, I, I had heard originally that he was going to write and direct episodes eight and nine. Now I'm hearing that he's going to write and direct episode eight and just write yeah. nine. Um, so I, I, wh whichever it is, I'm just damn happy he's involved. Mm -hmm. He, this is again, another addition. Lucasfilm mm -hmm. is hoarding yeah. all this Brilliant. incredible directing talent unto itself. And it's just, I think it bodes extremely well. So anyway, I already gave my spiel. What do you guys think about this? Well, you know, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan at the table. I love the movies, but just not as much as you guys. But I'm so impressed with the way Lucasfilms are collecting these brilliant directors and people that you might not first think of. Ryan Johnson, I've been such a fan of his for a mm. long time because he has such a great visual style. He's excellent at production design. He can tell a really detailed layered story very well and he's uh, fantastic at future future things creating a future world like he did with Looper and he has a bit of a film noir style too which I like 
Um, and I also loved what he tweeted when he when the news broke, which was the clip from the right stuff right. with oh, yeah. astronauts saying, you know, dear Lord, please not let me f up. Yeah. What mm -hmm. did you say? I said everything is a okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll f up. He's such a nice guy and a real talent. I love the plan. I, I just the overall plan by by Lucasfilm Disney of where they're going, the direction, it, it, from what they're going original trilogy style. Ryan Johnson would be the guy that you get for an Empire type movie, mm. and it's mm. right, you're going to hit that in Episode Eight. And what he's also very good at doing is character and emotion and futuristic mm -hmm. world. Look at his past movies, whether it be Looper and Brick. Mm -hmm. Those are not feel good stories um, all the way, around, but they're, they're character driven, emotional yeah. stories. Yeah. And that's what you need in Episode Eight. What concerns me, not about him, but with all this talk now with, with uh, Harrison Ford and rewrites and whether they're going to do that, who knows what's going to happen there. I just hope it doesn't affect the release of, of his schedule and all that type of stuff. So just hope they can figure out that mess. I don't think, I, I, like I said before, I don't think it's going to, Harrison Ford with a broken leg, I'm sorry, is he's in pain, I don't like to hear about that, but I don't think that's going to really affect the shooting schedule. They could have stand-ins, they could have doubles, they so. can like pop a they head. They could have him somebody. sitting in a chair. Right? Yeah, they could have him sitting, it's like, it's, you know, people are making such a big deal about it. Until I actually officially hear something, I don't believe any of that. But yeah. Ryan Johnson getting this role is incredible. Mm -hmm. I've loved his stuff since Brick. Looper's an incredible film. I've seen him talk in person. He himself has a science fiction film that when I saw him talk in person at CineFamily, he was like, I don't think I'll ever get to be able to do this because it's going to cost like 30 million. Bam, he's getting that 30, man. Yeah. Like yeah. He's doing Star Wars. You know he's going to make this other mind-blowing science fiction film. So yeah. to me, I'm excited on double fronts. Mm -hmm. Like we get his incredible talent on a Star Wars film and then that allows him to make his own personal amazing science fiction film. Mm. He's a super talent, really nice guy. Couldn't be happier. All right, folks, so I said we leave a couple of minutes for your live Twitter questions, and we're going to do just that. We're almost out of time, so we're just going to rapid fire through a few of them here. So, Chris Ali, what have you picked out? Eric Tish wants to know, what is your best 2000 Will Ferrell comedy, or your favorite, I should say? Anchorman, Zoolander, Step Brothers, Old School, or Elf? Anchorman. Ah, <laughs> uh, Step Brothers. Anchorman, Old School. Elf! <laughs> Tyler Pace wants to know, what do y'all think of Mark Wahlberg being in the Watch Dogs movie? Uh, I, I, I'm gonna confess, I'm not gonna pretend to know what we're talking yeah. about. I so. heard, I heard a rumor through Maud, my roommate who uh. plays video games. Oh, the she Watch Dogs. told me that uh. Watch Dogs, this video game, is getting made into a movie, and sure. it's been rumored that Mark Wahlberg will play the character, but I think, according to her, he's too old for that character mm. now, so maybe it is just Wasn't he rumor. Max Payne? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it too. Yeah. Max maybe he shouldn't be this. Well, he was rumored <laughs> for Nathan Drake at one point. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. was that so, too. He's yeah. always rumored for stuff. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> All right, what's next? Robert DeFaro wants to know, in your opinion, what is the most overrated film you've seen? Well, I'm talking about this. Uh, for me, it's, uh, but everybody else loves it, which is by definition what overrated oh. that means. Uh, Blade Runner. Mm. I'm not a fan of Blade Runner. I know, everybody always looks at me stupid, I get it. I don't even think you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you, I think you fell asleep and had a dream about right, Blade Runner. Right. I just watched it again last week, it's incredible. Um, I'm most overrated for me, Star Wars. Just no. kidding! Oh, oh, no. What? Um, I, overrated, like, I, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll, I'll say The Counselor, because that's the film that I had the worst no, time at. No, The Counselor, no one's overrated. It's hard to love it for it to be overrated. These, I can't think off the cuff. Yeah, right Jar Jar Binks is overrated. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give, overrated Counselor? Yeah, I'll give you one from just the last past year, American Hustle. I thought it was completely oh, overrated. Oh, yeah, you yeah. didn't like it so much? Well, uh... I don't know if overrated, it's probably too strong a word, but Lawrence of Arabia for me is really boring. Blasphemy! <laughs> oh wait, I've got one that's overrated, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Overrated. Well, yeah. Once again, no, uh, it, it, something rating. has to be universally like beloved for it to be considered I overrated. I can't think of one right What about you, Chris? So you got a movie that's really overrated? I mean, I like all the ones that are over yeah. here. <laughs> so you might not want to yeah. ask me. Yeah. Chairman of the board. Yeah. <laughs> Mortal <laughs> Instruments? My favorite. No, I'm just kidding. Caleb Danger Spock wants to know what was your favorite 80s action movie? Uh, bu 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 oh, mm. True Lies was in the 90s, wasn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. my overall favorite. Um, uh, probably First Blood. I, I'm going, can I do two? Can I say Die Hard and Predator? Yeah. Mm. Mm, die Hard, yes. Die Hard's a champ. I mean, yeah. You can't touch Die Hard. I'm gonna say I'm Cobra. Cobra. Oh, Cobra. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, a couple more quick. Christopher Butcher says, "Hey, AMC Movie News. After being made into a book and now a graphic novel, could we see Russia's Clockwork Angels be made into a movie?" 
I haven't read either. I mean, anything, look, studios are always looking for good IP. I mean, so, I mean, if it's good, it's possible. If it looks like it has blockbuster potential, it's possible. I can't comment on it much further than that because I, I haven't read it, so I don't really know. Have you guys, mm -hmm. any of you guys read it? No, but I just thought of my favorite 80s action. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the women. <laughs> Will Martinko is clearly a guy after my heart. Any news on the Mortal Instruments sequel? The last thing I heard was that the director dropped out. Okay, so here's the thing with Mortal Instruments. The Mortal Instruments comes out completely. They're saying that we're gonna do a five-part series or six-part series, whatever. The movie completely bombs. Uh, so it's like, okay, there go those plans. But then somebody from the production company said, no, we still are planning on moving ahead with it. I don't believe that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they say they are. I haven't heard anything about it since. I've heard no movement. I still high. I'm very, very dubious about it happening. Other than maybe like a three to four million dollars straight to Sci-Fi Network sequel, but I don't think we're going to see it on the big screen again. I hope not, because I want to see Lily Collins. Do, I like her as an actress. Mm. I want to see her get away from that and do some other stuff. She's really good. Yeah, me too. I don't think the first one did that well no. at the box office. I, so. I saw it in a yeah. theater empty with an old woman. Yeah. <laughs> me and my friend were laughing about the movie the whole time. <laughs> she wrote the books. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> oh. She wrote the books. Oh. <laughs> That's why she was crying. So she was crying, <laughs> weeping uncontrolled. <laughs> <laughs> They're ruining it. <laughs> All right, folks, that will do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, now is a great time to see some great movies at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater, showtime, and your movie ticket information. If you want an audio-only version of this episode, look in the description of this video, and you'll find a link to our podcast feed so you can listen to us on the way to work while you're at the gym or whatever. And also, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, click on the subscribe button. Become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel, keeping you up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news, and, of course, all of the various shows that we do. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. First of all, Miss Alicia Malone. Alicia, where can people find you online? Uh, I write about movies every day on my little blog, Malone'sMovieMinute.com, or you can find me here on YouTube slash movies on my jam. <laughs> Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you online? Right here on YouTube. Just look for Schmoes No. And I've been talking to you guys a lot on Twitter, at Christian Harloff. A lot of great questions these guys have. I love it. I mm. love all the Twitter it's stuff we great. get from people. Hey. Mr. John Schnepp. Hey, uh, you guys find me on Instagram and Twitter at John Schnepp. And in New Mexico this weekend, <laughs> hey. uh, Albuquerque Comic Expo, Ace. Come by, see me. I've got a booth there uh, late Friday and all day Saturday and Sunday. You sweaty nerds, get there. And we <laughs> draw are, something for we you. We are starting to talk about maybe doing New York Comic Con. Maybe. Yes. But we'll, we'll get back. It's in the sketch forget. phase. And we're going to be at San Diego Comic Con this year. We'll get more of that later. Uh, and of course, our host today, Miss Chris Lee Kennedy. Chris Lee, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and here on YouTube, The Movie Chick with two Ks like me. And you can find me on the various social media networks just at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia for AMC Movie News, and until next time, bye bye. Hey, everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions contests and prize giveaways.